Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Yusuf. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, witnessed the signing of an agreement cancelling homework and replacing it with practical assignments between the Ministry of Youth and Sports and a number of private schools. The agreement was signed by the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports member and head of the Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, and the Minister of youth and sports Ayman Lim Ayyir. His Highness stated that cancelling homework and focusing on practical assignments is in accordance with the outcomes of the Youth Summit 2018, which was held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in implementation of the initiatives of Istijaba. He stressed that the educational directives in the Kingdom are based on the principles of developing its scientific and educational pillars and avoiding the traditional teaching methods, which are represented by cancelling homework, which is considered a burden burden on students and a hindrance to practicing their hobbies. He stated that creating a productive student movement in the kingdom requires a, an approach towards practical assignments and developing sports talents and productive intellect and focusing on important information as well as developing talents which will create a generation that is open to production and innovation and the application of valuable suggestions. His Highness also hailed the private schools that have joined the project of cancelling homework. He noted the, prom pro the prominent role of the Minister of Education and the Minister of Youth and Sports, as well as the two ministries' cadres, who have worked on the project and achieved integration with private schools to achieve this initiative. Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid asserted that signing the agreement with private schools is in accordance with the vision of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. The Minister of Education stated that the agreement was a result of the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to develop relations between the youth and sports sector and educational institutions in terms of providing opportunities for students to practice their hobbies. The Minister of Youth and Sports hailed the interest of His Highness Sheikh Nasser which affirms his keenness on the youth summit outcomes. The school representatives expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for adopting national initiatives aimed at youth development in various fields. Today, مئويتها فقط ولكن في التعليم الحديث والمواد الأخرى اللي دخلت لنا هذه اللي إحنا اليوم نحتفل بها ولكن من ضمن هذا العام والله الحمد مملكة البحرين دائما سباقة في الإبداع ودائما سباقة في التقدم للأمام واستثمار طاقتها واستثمار وقتها في خدمة المجتمع وخدمة البحرينيين لإيصالهم إلى أفضل الأماكن اللي تطمح لها قيادة الرشيدة اليوم الله الحمد تمكننا مع التوقيع مع ستة مدارس خاصة بأن احنا نوصل إلى الأسلوب الحديث في التدريس اللي هو طبعا نعفي الطلبة من الواجبات المنزلية مع الاتفاق مع الأهالي أن أهاليهم أو أبنائهم المقصود بهم هم بيكون عندهم وقت أطول من بعد الدراسة القصد أن احنا نخليهم يلتحقون ببرامج أخرى رياضية ثقافية اجتماعية وإلى آخرة المقصود من ذلك هو مو بس عفاءهم الواجبات ولكن عشان نوجد الخامات ونوجد المواهب اللي أساسا موجودة في عروق البحرينيين احنا دائما نردد أن البحريني من ذهب لكن لازم نعطيه الوقت لازم نعطيه الوقت لأن كل مخترع كل عبقري في العالم لو ترجعون إلى أساسه في المدرسة كان فاشل لأنه ما كان عنده وقت في المدرسة يفكر في الأمور اللي يعطونها إياه في الدراسة إنما كان مخه في خارج المدرسة يبحث عن حلمه يبحث عن ابتكاره يبحث عن الشيء اللي هو يحبه فأحنا اليوم وصلنا إلى هذا الشيء طبعا صارنا سنة كاملة من العام ونحن في المدارس الحكومية بجهود وزير التربية والتعليم الدكتور مايد النعيمي قمنا بهذا الدور أعفينا الطلبة من الواجبات ولقينا اليوم ثمارها ولله الحمد فإحنا نبغي أن حتى حتى المدارس الخاصة بشكل عام إنهم يتبعون هذا الأسلوب الحديث إحنا بس ما ما نتكلم فقط عن إعفاء الواجبات المرحلة القادمة إحنا نبي نسوي بحث علمي بحيث إن كم عدد الساعات 
اللي الطالب يكون فيها معاي مركز كم عدد الساعات الأنسب للدراسة عشان ما أفقد انتباهها معاي فأبقيه دائما يكون مشتبك معاي وأخذ ما اتخذ منه أتأكد أن المعلومات وصلتها بشكل كامل فاليوم الحقيقة عقب توقيع مع هالست مدارس أنا يعني أحد أولياء الأمور أو أحد الآباء الموجودين اللي أفكر أن أبنائي لازم يكونوا في مدرسة من هالنوع هذا المدرسة اللي تعطي أبنائي وقت أنهم يمارسون هواياتهم ونطلع مواهبهم عشان يرفعون على مملكة البحرين في المحافل القادمة بإذن الله The BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, chaired the Military Pension Supreme Council meeting today in the presence of National Guard President, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Finance and National Economy Minister Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, National Security Agency President, Lieutenant General Abdel Adel bin Khalifa Al Fadl, BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and Interior Ministry's Under Secretary, Sheikh Nasser bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa. The Council discussed general policy accomplishments and management of the Military Pensions Fund, including administrative, technical rules and regulations. The Council also discussed investment plans regarding management and investing in the Military Fund. It also considered general policies of the Military Pensions Fund. The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the efforts of the members and General Director of the Military Pension Fund. He urged to continue offering ideas and visions in this field that will ensure the sustainability and development of the Military Pension Fund, preservation of the retirees' expenses, and setting regulations and laws capable of achieving of such matters and to achieve more benefits. Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Chief of Military Judiciary and Cassation Court President, Major General Dr. Yusuf Rashid Flayfel, Director of Finance Major General Ibrahim Abdullah Mahmoud, and General Director of the Military Pension Fund Brigadier Adel Isa Zayani were also present. A parliamentary delegation headed by the Speaker of the Representative Council for Ziyad Zainal will participate in the General Assembly meeting of the Inter-Parliamentary Union of the Permanent Committees and other related events in the Serbian capital of Belgrade. Bahrain's participation represents its engagement with international diplomacy with the objective of displaying Bahrain's efforts and achievements on all levels through its comprehensive reform project led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Various coordination meetings are set to be held among Arab, Islamic and Asian countries with the objective of arriving at common positions on the issues of the agenda. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the Arab League's extraordinary session on the ministerial level to discuss Turkey's aggression against Syria in the League's headquarters in Egypt. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation for Egypt for calling for this session, which is intended to unify Arab countries on this dangerous development. The minister affirmed that the aggression represents a breach of international law and a violation of Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity, which should be protected and preserved by the Arab nation. The minister rejected all interventions in Syria, whether it's from Turkey, Iran or Israel, and affirmed the importance of maintaining the national security of the Arab people against all threats. The session resulted in a joint statement in which Turkey's aggression against Syria territories have been condemned as a breach of the UN Charter and of its Security Council's resolutions, which call for the integrity and independence of Syria. The statement regarded Turkey's aggression as a direct threat to the national security of the Arab nation and international peace and affirmed that resistance against foreign aggression is a right that is guaranteed by the UN Charter. The statement also condemned D demanded an immediate and unconditional withdrawal from all Syrian territories and said that the latest development represents yet another episode in a series of breaches against the sovereignty of the Arab countries. It also rejected any attempts at changing the demographics of Syrian society by using the so-called buffer zone as pretext and called for respecting international law and matters related to the return of Syrian refugees. The statement said that Turkey bears full responsibility through its actions for the return of Daesh or any other terrorist organizations to resume their activities in the region and called on the Security Council to take all necessary measures to stop the empowerment of terrorist organizations inside or outside Syria. The statement also called on the UN Security Council to take the necessary steps to stop Turkey's aggression and stop it from receiving support of any kind. The statement affirmed that importance of resolving the Syrian crisis, politically not militarily, in order to end the suffering of the Syrian people and allow 
allow Syria to be restored to its normal role within a common Arab framework. The Secretary General of the Arab League was take then a task with contacting the UN Secretary General to convey the statement to its member states and with following up on the process of reversing Turkey's aggression. The statement also called for taking all necessary diplomatic, economic or financial measures to address Turkey's aggression. In line with the goals of the Economic Vision 2030, a conference was held on protecting human rights and the criminal justice system in light of the local efforts, mechanisms and international standards under the patronage of Public Prosecutor Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bainin in the presence of the Minister of Justice of Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khaled bin Ali Al Khalifa, and in cooperation with the United Nations Development Program and with the participation of members of the judiciary from GCC countries. The conference discusses many aspects of the field of criminal justice. More in this report. A number of various topics and themes were presented today at the Conference on Protecting Human Rights in the Criminal Justice System in light of the local efforts, mechanisms and international standards. The SIU uh, has been doing fantastic work uh, in this field over the last few years and the ability to share it with um, the practitioners, the judges, the prosecutors, the policemen in this field and, and take it further to learn from international experience, from our experts and others who are here. It's a really good lineup in this conference, and I think it's a really important um, step that we're able to have this um, open discussion about a really important area and take this even further. We started this cooperation with the Special Investigation Unit to strengthen together the uh, promotion, the respect of human rights in the criminal justice system, and I think that it's a common challenge, both uh, for Europe, Italy, and for Bahrain and the other countries in the region, and not, not only, uh, because it's you no, know, it's 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 something that uh, unites us. The need to safeguard and protect uh, human rights of everybody, also during a criminal justice justice proceeding. The speakers discussed the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to promoting, respecting and protecting human rights in addition to its continuous efforts to establish the values of integrity and equality, safeguard the rights and gains of society and develop the criminal justice system. Development needs three fundamental things, peace, stability and justice. So when we talk one of those main elements which is justice today and we see it through the work of the Special Investigation Unit that is a unit that has been created uh, according to the Istanbul Protocol. We are very pleased to, to see that here in Bahrain, a unit that uh, not so many countries have that. It's very important to have justice and to be perceived to have access to fair justice as a fundamental right for, for, for human rights. Uh, this will enable uh, the achievement of the Goal 16 under the Sustainable Development Goals. Bahrain already has done a lot of strides in achieving uh, the targets of the other goals, so we're very happy to, to see that there is a focus now on Goal 16. We believe that all of that effort uh, will accumulate, that Bahrain will be able to fast track achieving all of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. I think that Bahrain is a country that is recognized always for being open to promotion of uh, exchange of ideas and of knowledge and of information and of be best practices. And it's an exchange. It's from Bahrain and it's towards Bahrain. So here we have international experts from Europe and from the region and we look forward to a very, very productive two days of work. The two-day conference will also focus on international and national efforts that aim to protect the rights of accused and convicted persons in the criminal system, the role of modern national mechanisms, as well as dealing with the crimes of torture and ill treatment. Bahrain stresses its full support to the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, on receiving additional reinforcements of troops and defense equipment in the framework of the joint action between Saudi Arabia and the United States. Bahrain affirms that this strategic step reflects the continuous and tireless efforts of Saudi Arabia as a pillar of security and stability for the countries and people of the region. It also 
reflects the keenness of the United States to maintain peace and address all challenges and threats in order to preserve the sovereignty and independence of the countries of the region and to ensure to their peoples the means of progress and prosperity. Bahrain reiterates its firm and strong support for all initiatives and efforts of Saudi Arabia, appreciating the commitment of the friendly United States to cooperate with its allies in the region to ensure the security and stability and peace.